Now, I don't know when mine might come in. Right now, it's giving me a window of May through July, but that window has moved before, so I'm not really holding my breath. But there was something in the news that Ben and I talked about a little bit over Twitter. Is some speculation that maybe Tesla is actually hoarding the Model 3s and are going to start dumping them in July. There have been reports of parking lots and garages filled with Model 3s just kind of hanging out around the Tesla headquarters. And, and the speculation was in the articles that I was reading a few months ago anyway, that these were all defective and they couldn't sell them for some reason. But now the speculation is that maybe they're gonna hold on to all those and then dump them in Q3 to kind of hack the tax incentives. So the US federal government offers a $7,500 uh, tax incentive for people to buy electric cars, but it starts to sundown for a company once they sell 200,000 cars. And Tesla right now is kind of knocking on the door of 200,000 cars. And the way it works is that once they get to 200,000, their customers will continue to get that full tax credit until the end of that quarter. And then the next quarter, it goes down by half to 3250 and then the next quarter it goes down by half again and eventually goes away. So the theory is that since Tesla is so close to 200,000 they're basically hoarding their Model 3 so that they can hit 200,000 right at the very beginning of Q3 which means that they'll have the entire third quarter to uh, have as many people as possible take advantage of that tax incentive. And there is some math behind this. Some people like Bloomberg have been keeping track of the production of Model 3s and what they found is that the number of Model 3s being produced is way higher than the number of them that are actually being sold right now. Which has led a whole bunch of naysayers to say that Model 3 reservation holders have changed their minds about taking the car so they're not buying them once they're available. And that never made sense to me. There's like 400,000 reservation holders. Wouldn't that reservation just go to the next person? And in fact, I've seen people say in comments that only 30% of reservation holders are actually accepting the cars once they get them. And I'm thinking maybe that's where they're getting that number from. And I mean, I guess that could be the case, but even 30% of 400,000 reservation holders is more than enough to cover the ones that they've already produced, so that, that still doesn't add up. But this end of the tax credit thing is something that I'm sure they've been preparing for for a long time. And to set it up this way so that they can get as many people to take advantage of it in Q3 as possible, it's a smart move. By the way, I've heard a lot of people say that they think that Tesla is going to completely go under as soon as this tax credit goes away, assuming that the only reason people are buying electric cars is because of the tax incentive. And I call BS on that. That has absolutely nothing to do with whether or not I would get this car. If I don't wind up getting the tax incentive, you know, look, $7,500 would be great. But if I don't get it, maybe I'll take a less premium package. Maybe I'll save up for a little longer and put a bigger down payment down. But that's not going to be the thing that keeps me from getting it. Now, actually, just in the last week, Elon's been making some headlines because he's been kind of ranting and raving about uh, negative stories about Tesla in the news. And I can't say I completely agree with how he's handling it, but uh, this was a topic that came up between Ben and I. CNBC <laughs> cannot help but bash Elon Musk. Right. I saw a clip of Jay Leno, had Jay Leno's face, his mm -hmm. giant head, and it said, why Jay Leno felt like an idiot when he bought a Tesla. And then I watched it, and the story was, um, he actually met Elon Musk somewhere. He was talking about how much he liked the Teslas and how he would, you know, and Elon was like, well, if you ever want one, call me up and we'll, we'll make it happen. Right. So he called up Elon, and uh, Elon was in China at the time, and it was night. So it was the middle of the night, and he felt like an idiot for calling him. Oh, that, that was why he felt like an idiot. That was why he felt like an idiot. And All then right. he went on to talk about how much he loved the car, but the headline, yeah. Yeah. the title of that video from CNBC right. said that's why, he, you know. Yeah, it's irresponsible. It, it's, it's so lame. Um, yeah. I, I understand that people are not interested in the actual boring, mundane, normal things. And so you, the stories need to have some sort of edge to them. Otherwise, they're not interesting and people won't watch them or people won't click on them or read them or whatever. Yeah. But that's just making shit up. Uh, another one that I saw, and I don't remember if this is from CNBC or what, but I was, they were talking about it on some news show. They were talking about something about the range or something in the Model S, and the guy basically wrapped up his anti-Tesla argument by saying, so, I mean, you know, around town it might be one thing, but if you're ever driving across the Sahara, you, you'd be screwed. <laughs> and I was like, is that, the, is that the level we're going for here? Right, like, right. We were talking earlier about how every time there's a Tesla accident, it's nationwide news. Yeah. No other car company gets that kind of scrutiny. There's no perfect solution to anything. There's no perfect right. car. And, and I'm, I'm, you know, lined up to get one of these. And I know full well there's going to be some things about it that 
are probably less than what I really want. But that's true of the car that I have now. That's true of every car I've ever had. Right. But there are people that, that get in there and they do Tesla reviews and I'm like, well, it doesn't have this one little thing. It's like, well, okay, so it doesn't have that one little thing. Right, right. <laughs> you know? Right. Have you seen the um, Super Cruise in the Cadillac? I've heard about it. It uses LiDAR, right? Uh, I don't, it may. The interesting thing about that one is that in the steering wheel, it has these infrared sensors to detect if your eyes are not on the road. Right, it has like a, yeah. a face thing. And, 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 it, and if, you're not, if your eyes are not on the road, then it will, it will disengage. I mean, I'm like, cool, but creepy. That's like very creepy. Isn't there a camera in here though? There's one up here, yeah. So yeah, I heard somebody talking about that. Like, are they I was preparing? gonna cover that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's my. Okay. Here's my concern. If I'm in a car by myself, I'm talking to myself, uh -huh. or I'm singing, <laughs> or I'm doing something horribly <laughs> embarrassing. Uh -huh. Because, you know, there's invincibility shield. Nobody can right. see me being really stupid in my car. Right. Uh, so so the idea of, of even like voice activation, which I know this has. Sort of. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Even that creeps me out a little. Right. No, I, so the idea behind that, and I think they even put it in the owner's manual, is that you will, when this becomes a ride sharing thing, and this car is fully autonomous, that will be a uh, kind of dash cam feature. So um, like if, if somebody was in your car, you could be watching them? I, I don't know if you could be watching them. Or at least record it? Well, it, I think it'd be more like if there was an incident or something. Or if there was a, uh, yeah, if there was like another thing, like a reason to have footage of what was going on in the car, then they would have it. Um, but I don't think it's something that you would, like who knows, maybe it could be facial recognition to know it's actually you, the person that rented the car. Like it, it's, it's sure. there's so many yeah. applications. I get you. Um, but that's the thinking behind it is that it's more about the Tesla network once that actually yeah. comes out.